Did you um, request anybody to check the videos in the area? Yes, sir. Um, back up after interviewing Mr. Rowe, um, Dale Davis, who was the dog, took care of the dogs, also arrived, on, and we interviewed him. Um, tried to get some information. Once we finished those interviews, our crime scene was done. Uh, we responded back to our low country office here in Walterboro. Um, Collin County Sheriff's Office was there, 14th Circuit solicitors and their investigators were present, as well as most of our office and other agents um, that we called in. Um, so we can relay to them what we had learned so far and what needed to be done. Um, so we started assigning tasks to other, other agents um, in Collin County Sheriff's Office to go back out and start canvassing the neighborhood. Um, you know, normally you would canvass the neighborhood when you're, at, when you're out there at night, and some agents were, but two or three o'clock in the morning, most people are sleeping. Um, it's out also the country, it's dark, you don't really get the lay of the land. So you go back the next day when it's daylight. Um, so we sent Colony County out, um, and they went from one end of Moselle Road to the other, uh, attempting to locate video surveillance, um, talk to neighbors, see if they heard anything, saw anything, um, having any problems with burglaries, robberies in the area. Um, anything to develop a lead that we could track down. You were searching for any potential killers? Yes, sir. Did the search of the videos in the surrounding areas produce anything? No, sir. Um, not many homes are close to the road out there, and the ones that did, not all of them had video or video surveillance. Uh, the ones that did that we, we saw were at night. Um, and it, you couldn't see, you can tell a car is passing, but you couldn't tell the make model. You couldn't see the tag number, so it was really, it was really useless. But y'all tried? We tried, yes, sir. Okay. And, I, and I think you said after <coughs> David, and he, uh, he testified yesterday. Um, when you talked to Rogan Gibson, is that when you first learned about a conversation where he may have heard some voices? Yes, sir. I mean, that morning you heard that from him? But um, Agent, Cal Agent Croft and Agent McAllister interviewed Rogan Gibson, um, I believe it was sometime mid-morning or lunchtime. Um, and me being the lead agent, well, everything that they learned, they report back. Um, so I, I learned later on that afternoon that they had interviewed Mr. Gibson and um, that, that Rogan had relayed a conversation that he had had with Paul on the phone uh, about an injured dog and that Rogan had requested a video and that during the phone call, um, what Rogan had heard in the background. Paul, Maggie, and 99% sure, Alex? Yes, sir. And, and, and some point on June 8th of 2021 was the big house, or the main house, if you will, searched uh, by law enforcement? Yes, sir. Um, Agent Croft and Agent McAllister, upon their completion with Rogan Gibson, uh, they went back to the house, um, spoke with those that were present. Uh, I believe they spoke with um, Attorney Lee Cope, which is a law partner of Alec Murdoch's, as well as um, Alec's brother, John Marvin. Um, they told them while they were there they wanted to search the house for evidence, and they were given consent, and that search commenced. Did, did we get Alex's phone that night? No, sir. Okay. Now, June 8th becomes June 9th. You're investigating, correct? Yes, sir. Working with the locals? Yes, sir. Everybody's getting leads to follow? Yes, sir. Uh, did you have an occasion to speak with Alex Murdoch again? Yes, sir. Um, on June 9th, um, I contacted um, John Marvin Murdoch, Alex's brother, and stated that we needed to sit down and have a, a more proper interview. Um, what do you mean by that more proper? During, right after a tra tragic event, you want to get as much information as possible. Um, but you can imagine that speaking with somebody who's experienced a tragic event, they're not going to remember everything. Um, later on, once they have time, kind of memory, memory reset, they're going to have more details. They're going to be thinking a little bit more clear. Um, so we scheduled an additional interview, which took place on June 10th with, with Alec Murdoch and his brothers um, to see what they may have known, what they may have experienced. Um, in their lives that may have led to this. I mean, you know, at that time, you don't have any information. You've got to go out and talk to everybody, or as many people as you can. And when you talked, uh, and we've seen it, and again, I'm not going to play it again. The jury's got it. But that second interview, uh, who was there? Uh, with, me, uh, with me was Alec Murdoch again in the front seat. Agent Jeff Croft was sitting behind Alec. 
and um, Alex attorney uh, Jim Griffin who is at the defense table was also with in the vehicle too. And, and I think this was a voluntary statement by the defendant, correct? Yes, sir, it was. Okay. No question that it was voluntary. He wanted to give it and you wanted to ask him questions. Yes, sir. And I have to because it just comes out. Could you understand him? Yes, sir. Did he appear to be under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or other intoxicant? No, he did not. Sir. Did he have trouble understanding David Owen when he was asking him questions in your mind? In my mind, he wasn't. Um, again, if I wasn't, if I wasn't clear, I think he said, "Excuse me," or you know, say that again if he didn't hear what I said. And of course, I repeated myself. But it, it wasn't that he didn't understand me. It was more so that he didn't hear me. And did you? Could you understand his words? And were they appropriate to your answer to your yes. questions? Yes, they were. And there's a colloquy between all of y'all and Mr. Griffin at several points on the interview, right? Yes. Did he appear to be clear in his mind, is what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And this was Hamity Day? Well, first of all, when you talked to him that first statement, how long was it after the 911 call? Uh, I interviewed him. I spoke with him, interviewed him just before 1 a.m. on June 8th, and the 911 call came in on that Monday night at approximately 10.06 p.m. So that's so just a few hours. hours. Yes, sir. Did you say it was fresh in his mind then? Yes, sir, I would. And this second interview was uh, on what day and time? June 10th. Okay. And what time Two was the second? 1.30ish. Hang on just a minute, sir. Uh, it, it began approximately 1.45 p.m. I'm sorry, 1.54 p.m. First and the second interview, Special Agent David Owen, based on your being there and listening and asking, asking questions, was the defendant clear about whether or not he had gone back down to the kennels after he went to the house? No, sir. Was he clear that he had not gone back down there? Yes, sir. Well, that was clear. He hadn't gone down there. That was clear. You actually leave? Can't leave the witness. Did you have un trouble understanding that? No, sir, I did not. And was it clear where he'd gone after that? Yes, sir. Based on your questions? He went to visit his mother in Almeida. And when he came back? When he came back, yes, sir. And that's the 12th. That Second was June, interview? June, June 10th. June 10th. I'm sorry, my, yes, sir. I was skipping it. Did you collect the defendant's phone that day? Um, I asked for consent to do a um, cell phone extraction. Um, Dylan Hightower with the 14th Circuit actually conducted that extraction, um, and he conducted a logical extraction while Mr. Mudart was being interviewed. Conrad's expert on phones. What's logical extraction mean? Um, so there's two types of. I'm not. I'm not a cell phone expert, but what I understand is logical extraction. There's two types: logical and physical. Logical. It's basically the surface. Um, of your phone. You get your phone calls, text messages, emails, photographs, uh, very basic information. Um, the physical extraction, you get more files on the phone, um, such as orientation change, your steps, more intricate, more information with the physical extraction. So on the 10th, um, working with the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office investigator, y'all got a logical extraction? Yes, sir. Okay. And was the phone given back then? Yes, sir. Upon the completion of the extraction, it was given back, yes. But you're working with the local officials at this point, correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> After that, did you have an occasion to talk with Marion Proctor and her family without saying what they said? Yes, sir. I'm not sure is that it, the exact date, but it was sometime that week or the following week that I spoke with Marion Proctor and her husband. And, and was Maggie Murdoch's Mercedes process? Yes, it was. Okay. Did y'all obtain search warrants? Yes, sir, we did. Would you dispute if I told you that was June 15th for social media, financial records, and to search the ponds of Moselle and surrounding areas? No, sir. And did y'all do that? Yes, sir, we did. You actually went out and searched? Yes, sir. Did you, how'd you search the ponds? Uh, we had sled dive team come down. Um, once they arrived and kind of surveyed the pond, it wasn't deep enough for them to actually dive, so they just waited 
Um, they had, you know, hip waders on, so they were walking around basically on their hands and knees um, searching the pond. Um, there were some other waterways and ponds on, on the property that were searched, um, and I believe they went back the next day to complete searches. Um, also around that area, because going into Hampton, it's, it's a swampy area. This Salcatchee River, the Little Salcatchee River, those areas were searched. Um, all the, also that same day that the, the ponds were searched, we did a land search um, in conjunction with Collington County. They had ATVs, UTVs, four by fours, and you know we were searching the property, looking for any evidence that might help us develop leads or point us in the right direction in the investigation. So sleds working? Yes, sir. Working with locals? Yes, sir. And did was the property searched again on June 16th? Yes, sir. And where that's, was that? That's when the dive team returned and completed their search of the waterways and, and ponds. And uh, it's also there were some uh, blackout cartridge casings and some shotgun shells that were seized later, correct? Also. Yes, sir. Um, the pond that was the, the first pond that was searched is um, is by the, sh the the shooting range or the shoot house um, across across Moselle from the main house. Um, so I, going back to June eighth, when Agent Croft went back out to the house and they conducted the search, he located some additional. 300 blackout shell casings. Um, we wanted. We knew there was a shoot house by the ponds, uh, so we went over there and located the, um, the 300 blackout shell casings inside the shoot house, as well as some shell shot shells from shotguns by the pond, and those were collected. Did you end up talking with the pathologist? Yes, sir. Did you? Um have an occasion to speak with uh, where Maggie Murdoch might have been on June 7th. Well, any place she might have visited. Yes, sir. Um, according to the statement that Alec gave me, that she was seeing a doc that she had been to Charleston to see a doctor, and he gave me a name. Um, I did some research, and being from Charleston, I was familiar with the doctor and the location. Uh, so I went by and spoke with the doctor, and um, they said they verified that she was there that day. She told me what she was. They told me what she was wearing, which is the, the clothing she was found in that night. Um, she didn't appear to be in any distress. Um, it, it appeared to be a, a normal a normal visit. I didn't get into what the visit was, um, but it was a normal visit for for them. And and days are becoming a week, and you're moving on. Did you talk with the defendant Alex Murdoch again during this time period? Uh, a few times, yes, sir. A few times? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, um, do you remember on July 28th meeting him at the Colleton County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Um, I believe it was a few days prior to the 28th. Uh, he had contacted me. We still had custody of his Suburban, um, and he was seeking to have his Suburban returned to him. Um, I indicated to him that it was inoperable. I was unable to return it to him. Um, and he asked to get some, some personal belongings out of there. I believe he had some clothing and some golf clubs in there. And he was going on vacation with uh, Maggie's family and needed his golf clubs. So he called about his car? Yes, sir. I mean, that was the point of his phone call? He asked about the investigation as well. Uh, well, he asked about the investigation later on on the 28th when I did meet with him and to, you know, let him get some of the clothing and some of his belongings out of the Suburban. Um, he indicated to me that he had some questions and wanted to know about the investigation. And I, at that time I indicated, I said, well, I have some additional questions as well. I said, I don't, I, I think I had another, uh, another interview scheduled. I said, I can't meet with you right now. Can we meet sometime tomorrow? And he stated, and again, he stated no, that he was going out of town. Um, and I said, well, so go with your family, take a relaxing vacation when you return, give me a call, let's schedule something and we'll sit down. Uh, a few days later, I believe it was August 3rd or August 4th, uh, he returned my phone call and said, I'm back, uh, let's schedule something. Uh, and we scheduled a date for August the 11th. So he called, asked about the case, the car. He said you couldn't meet, I could meet with you tomorrow. And he said he couldn't, he's going on vacation. Yes, sir. He gets back, y'all agree on a date to, for another interview? Yes, sir. And uh, uh, specifically, what had uh, you told him about that interview or what had he asked you about that interview prior to this? Prior right. to actually the interview? About setting up the interview? Yes, sir. He just stated he had some questions. He wanted to know what we were doing, where we were at, if we had any information. Um, and I told him that we didn't have a whole lot. And I, I had some questions that I needed clarification on um, that I needed to sit down with him. 
Now, and, and prior to this, had y'all collected a bunch of buckle swans? Yes, sir. Okay. Why? Um, well, when our crime scene agents, when they process the scene, um, they, they look for touch DNA. Of course, you can't see it, so you're just thinking, okay, where could somebody have touched? I know they swabbed um, door handles and they swabbed different areas. Um, there was, evidently, there was the shell casings um, and the shot shells. Uh, there were no weapons found that night um, by the bodies, so we didn't have those to test uh, other than the shotgun that Alec had taken, uh, gone and gotten, gotten from the house during the 911 call. And, and at that time, you know, I, I wasn't familiar with the Murdoch family. I didn't know the Murdoch family, but I knew that they were, there was a, a large boat case. There was an um, issue where Paul had been charged or indicted on um, the boat accident and the, the death of Mallory Beach. So, you know, that's a catastrophic event for that family. So, you know, you immediately think, okay, well, that's something big, so that needs to be addressed as well. Um, and, you know, I have friends, friends and family over at my house all the time. So their DNA is going to be there. I knew that Alec had friends and family at his house all the time, especially law partners. I saw them there. So if I'm going to start collecting DNA, I need to eliminate the ones that I know were there. So you start going out to friends and family, um, pe talking to people in the boat case that were on the boat that night, um, trying to document their alibis and getting their DNA to make sure, you know, to, you know, if we find an unknown, is it them? So you were trying to either rule in or rule out any other possible suspect? Yes. And who brought up the boat, boat case first in this case um, when you got involved? When's the first time you heard about it? Um, during the 911 call. Alec mentioned it in the 911 call. Um, he mentioned it to Sergeant Green when he arrived. Um, he mentioned it to me during the interview. And so you followed up on that? Mm. Yes, I did. Or yes, we did. We did. I missed all, I, I watched it, but some testimony with the pathologist about possible scenarios. What guns were found at or near Maggie and Paul when y'all got there? None. None? None. Other than the shotgun that was by Alex's truck that he retrieved from the house, but there were no guns found by, Alec, by Maggie or Paul. And, and that gun was given to you by Alex? Given to law enforcement? It was given to law enforcement by Alex, yes, sir. Okay, let's, um, did you have an occasion to talk with the defendant again? On August the 11th. Okay. And, and tell, tell these folks, um, where that took place? At the uh, Sleds Low Country Regional Office here in Walterboro. How in far Street. is that from where we're standing or sitting right now? Two, three minute drive. If, you've been, if, if, you're, if you're from Walterboro any, any length of time, it's the old hospital, the old uh, mental, the mental health DSS building. They got y'all in the old hospital in the mental health building? Yes, sir. Um, what time was it? The interview. Interview began approximately 11.09 a.m. And describe the room, interview room itself. I mean, it's, it's plain walls. There's a table, um, a small conference table, about basically about the size of this desk, um, and four chairs. Of course, we move the chairs in and out for to accommodate the number of people. Um, there's video cameras up on the ceiling to record any interview that occurs in there. Are the video cameras visible? Yes, sir.
Mr. Chief, let's mark states 511, 512, and 513. And do, just ask you, does that relate to what you're saying right now? Testifying to? Yes, it does. Your Honor, uh, 511, 512, and 513, I believe, without objection. No objection. admit it. And the same putting the Elmo. <clears throat> Actually, Judge, I'm going, um, out of abundance of caution, I'm going to withdraw states 511 without objection, I believe. Five eleven is withdrawn with the court's permission. Please, this five twelve and five thirteen. I'm holding. Just tell the folks what this is. That is the interview room in our Low Country Sled office. And can you see cameras in there? Yes, sir. Up in the corners. Coach, I didn't know if you wanted to take a break. This is what we're going to play the interview now, which may be semi-lengthy, and I just want to bring that to the court's attention. So I hope you don't mind me saying that. All right, thank you, gentlemen. We'll have you go to the jury room for a short break.
We will bring the jury. Very good, you may proceed. Special Agent David Owen, we stopped at uh, right at, right before we were talking about the interview on August 11th. Um, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen the jury who, who was at that interview? Who participated in that interview? Alec Murdoch and Corey Fleming. And prior to playing the video, um, was this a voluntary statement? Yes, it was. Okay. The defendant was not in custody? No, he was not. He was free to leave? Yes, he was. Was there because he wanted to be there? Yes, sir. Uh, did he tell you he wanted to ask some questions? Yes, he did. Did you tell him you wanted to ask him some questions? Yes, I did. Your Honor, I have, um, we now, there, there's, we have redacted the last part of this video with the uh, consent of both parties. What's contained on 517 includes the video without the re redaction, and we now offer 517, I believe, without objection. So admit it. Permission to publish, um, if someone would please. Who is Corey Fleming? Uh, Corey Fleming was a defense attorney out of Buford area, also a friend of Alec Murdoch's. Did you know him prior to this? No, sir, I did not. Corey Fleming? No, sir. Thank you. Who's down to your right? Jeff Croft, who we've who's testified. Jeff, you still in here? There, is that here in the back? Yes, sir. Okay. What time is this? It indicates 9.50. The time was incorrect on our recording system. Um, but my notes in my report indicates it was 11, approximately 11.09 a.m. Thank you. I'm sorry, Judge, the, the, one of the jurors is requesting Is that Corey Fleming? Yes, it is. Thank you. 
It was, it was brutal at my house last week. The air pressure went out. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. Lord, you spell your name with two M's or one? One. All right, um, Alec, I, I appreciate you coming in today. Um, That's good. I understand. Um, I know we've got a lot to talk about. I mean, you have man's questions. Um, but before we get started with your questions, this has been going on for over two months, and we've done a lot of work. I know, yeah. And I've got some more questions that I need to get clarifications on. Sure. Okay. Um, so we'll just we'll start with that. Wait a minute. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought we were coming here so you can update him on what's going on. And I intend to do that. As okay. Let's do that first. Okay. Let's well, do that first. The update is I'm doing the investigation, and I have some questions that I need. I would like some answers to. And I mean, certainly, if, if you know, I ask the question. If you don't want to answer it, you don't have to answer it. No, I'm fine with that. Though. I mean, it's, it's it's more clarifications of the two interviews you've already given me. Totally understand. Okay. Just one, one second. Yeah. Wait one second. All right. Um, I need for you to tell me. Are you going to give us information, or are we just here for you to ask questions? Now, I'm going to give you some information. Right. Why can't you give us information first? Some of the information that you're asking about are in my questions. And as we go through, you'll see. Okay. I don't mind it. I don't mind I know you don't. I know you don't. But I can't. I mean, I'm a friend, but I'm also a lawyer, and I, I like to know what, what we're doing. I like to understand what we're talking about. You know, um, well, well, I need well, you to I need you to answer this question. Okay. Are you asking him questions to further your investigation, or are you asking him questions because you think that he's a suspect? I need a straight answer. I am asking these questions to further my investigation. All right. What, does that mean that you're not asking him? these questions as a suspect because it Good. because I'm not comfortable with you asking him questions as a suspect when when I came here with the thought that you were going to be telling him where you are in the investigation what it is, what it is you've done, seen, uncovered, whatever. That's why we came here. Well, let, let me let me respond to your question. Yeah. Um, it may not be a direct answer that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and I've and I've told Alec this when, when we first met. Any homicide investigation, mm -hmm. you start with the closest person, and or the person who found the deceased. Both mm -hmm. cases, that's Alec. Mm -hmm. Everybody stays in that investigation until we can get them out. Mm -hmm. And right now, because of the questions that I have that I need explanations for, I cannot get Alec out. Okay. Yeah. That's a reasonable statement. I don't have any problem with that statement. That's fine. Um, I don't read it, but. Um, Everybody in the United States of America has an opinion on this case. Mm -hmm. And because I know everybody, I know it's a bunch of bullshit. Um, I can't imagine that y'all are going to be asking about nonsense in the, in the internet. No. No. Well, I mean, just, just like you, I'm aware of what's out there. Yeah. I have not read every article. I don't care to read every article because. They're not doing the investigation. That's right. Not. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, uh, you know, Ellie, if you're comfortable, I'm, I'm, you feel I'm, okay. Yes. Then I'm that's fine. Anything to help. All right. That's fine. So I'm going to go back to Monday morning, and you went to the office. Okay. 
what time did you go to the office? Who, who, is, who was at your house when you left, and what time did you go to the office? Uh, uh, we had been to a ball game that weekend. Um, I, I don't remember exactly what time it would have been. Uh, somewhere between 8.30 and 9.30 probably, okay. 10 o'clock maybe at the latest. Okay. Like that. And, and, and when I ask about time, I'm not saying you know, it was 5 11 or something like that. I just totally understand. I mean, ballpark. That's as close as you can get to it. And if, if you need to know exactly when, um, my. There, there, there would be a keypad that would tell when, when exactly I went in my office that I can get for you. Okay. So you so you have a key fob to get in your office? A, a card. A card. Yes, sir. Okay. Gotcha. But you know, a little bit you know, it's probably a little bit on the later side of that. If I I guess I know Maggie got up early um, to get out of there because she had an appointment in Charleston. Um I just don't remember if I left right after she did or I piddled around. Okay. But, and I already know that Paul stayed at John Mormons that night, so it was just you and Maggie at the house. That's correct. Um, and I know when, we, when you were at the office, you were working on motions, and some of those motions you dealt with were for Paul's, the, the vote, vote accident or the vote case. I don't really. I'm not really doing the legal work. I understand, I understand. But, uh, you know, you're Paul's dad, you're a lawyer, you're definitely going to know what's going on. Yeah. Um, I mean, so what were those motions? I mean, did it deal with Parker's or was it the actual boat accident or? It was the civil, it was the civil case. Okay. <coughs> what time did you leave and get home? Earlier than normal, um, I'd say 5:30. That's when you left the office, yes, sir. Okay. What time did Paul get home that night? Um, me and Paul got there about the same time. Maybe he was a little bit later than me, or maybe a little bit earlier than me, but it was close to the same time. And y'all rode around the farm. Um, I believe you said two different trucks or two different vehicles. Yes, sir. What were those two different vehicles? Oh, um, we rode in the in the white pickup truck and we rode in the black pickup truck. And either one of those, did, did you see any long guns? Any, take take your time. It's like that. Did you see any rifles or shotguns? Um, I don't remember seeing any that day, no. We did have <coughs> pistols. Yeah, because I know you said you went to target practice. Well, not really target practice, okay, just, just shoot. Yeah. We were running around for a couple hours, just looked at everything. All the stuff Paul did on the farm. And, um, we just spent you know, time, time to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, you can do sunflowers because he was wor worried about the sunflowers mm -hmm. that was the first thing we looked at and then we just rode we just rode and looked at i mean we hadn't done it in a while but we just rode talked <laughs> and rode talked what you talk about everything you know just, uh, 
one of the main things, he'd been having trouble, his feet had swelled up, and we were worried about blood pressure and stress on him, and I mean, he handled all this stuff so amazingly, but I mean, we were just so worried about it. But I mean, we talked about that, we talked about the farm, we just talked about everything. Has Paul been seeing a doctor for this beat? No, sir. We were trying to get him to go? Trying to get him to go. And he was resistant? Um, yeah, he had been resistant, but um, much less so after his feet swelled up. I mean, he'd been having all kind of little problems, but much less after his feet swelled up. His, his, his parents, I'm sure you and Maggie stayed on him about going How? I mean, how did he respond to you? To going out? No, going to the doctor. He did. When y'all when y'all talked about it. He's very resistant. Very, very resistant. I mean, we talked to him about seeing a doctor, about the stresses of everything with the boat wreck. Um, he didn't think he needed to do that. Um, I mean, we tried to watch him really closely. Um, That he was resistant. What time did Maggie get back home that night? Later. Um, I'd say probably, the best I can tell, a couple hours after um, after us, after we got there. When y'all returned, when you and Paul returned back to the house, was Maggie there? I can't remember if Maggie came by the, the um, shed when Paul and I were up there or if we met her at the house. But, you know, <clears throat> it's not unusual for her if we're messing around for her to swing through up there. Mm -hmm. The Maggie was supposed to be coming. Oh, I've since found out she was worried about me and me worried about my dad mm -hmm. and so she came home. So at that point in the interview she said, did he tell you she came home because she was worried about his dad? Yes. Basis for the objection. Leading, he just repeating what the jury just heard on the video. <clears throat> Yes, sir. God, I, I can play it and come back and ask him to, to clarify that. That's all. Go ahead, please. The man was supposed to be coming home. I shouldn't have found out. She was worried about me and me worried about my dad mm -hmm. until she came home. Where was where she going to stay at? At Eddie's stuff. We were having work going down there. And that wasn't 100%, but it's pretty well she was going to stay at Eddie's stuff. So I'm kind of surprised you that she came back. Uh, that didn't totally surprise me. She'd let me know earlier that she was coming home. But then I found out later why wow, she came home. She was concerned for you. Sir. What time did y'all sit down and eat dinner? Not too long after that. Blanc had made dinner. <clears throat> and so the three of us ate dinner together. What was the conversation around the dinner table? Normal. Regular stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't tell you exactly, but... How was Maggie's appointment in Charleston that day? <sighs> I think it had gone good. We didn't really... I mean, we didn't really get the chance to talk about it in detail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's been having a couple of medical issues. I can't even remember which one. It wasn't anything huge. I can't remember exactly which one she went for. 
And after dinner, back in fall, went to the kennels or? And you know, I don't know exactly how that went. Um, I stayed on the couch and I dozed off. And then I got up. Did you watch TV that night? I know the TV was, I believe the TV was on. But I mean, I wasn't watching it. Repeat that. But this next question um, regarding a tree video, had you confronted him with that before? No, sir, I had not. Okay, please go ahead. There is a video on Paul's phone of um, you and him on the farm that night when you were in khaki pants and a dress shirt. You were playing with a tree. I don't remember playing with a tree. Yeah. I guess there was a tree sapling or something that was had fallen over or bending over and you were trying to get it to stand back, stand up. Um, but I mean, the, the question in that is, when I met you that night, you were in shorts and a t-shirt. At what point in that evening did you change clothes? I'm not sure. I, you know, it would have been... Before dinner or after dinner? No, it would have been... What time of day was that? I would have thought I'd already changed. Uh, there's not a time. Is he asking you now what time that picture was? Yes, sir. I was staff on it because there's so many posts, um, but I want to say it, it's, it looks to be about dusk. So that would have been 7, 30, 8 o'clock. I guess I changed when I got back to the house. Earlier when, earlier when we spoke, <clears throat> and you talk about waking up from your nap and then going to check on your mother and you tried to call Maggie, and you tried to call Paul, and then you uh, sent, him to, or sent Maggie a text that you were going to check on your mother. You also told me that Maggie didn't normally go with you to check on your mother, but that she might, might, might ride that night. Did you go by and check on her? Go by and check on my mom? Maggie, before you left to go? No, I didn't. You didn't. With her not responding to you um, and thinking that she might ride with you, why didn't you? I, I don't, I don't uh, remember having plans that Maggie was going to ride with me. Um, but maybe she had told me that she was that night. I, I don't, I don't recall that. I don't remember that specifically, but. Um, I mean, it wasn't, she didn't normally go with me. I mean, it's not like we had plans that she was going to ride with me, or that she was going. Um,
six or two seventy eight six oh one and then in front of the school um turn right that's how I believe I went. <laughs> Talk to Shelly Smith at this point. She had been interviewed, yes. I had not spoken with her by that time. <laughs> yes, sir. Please go. You know, I took her back home. You're making a stop some way. On the way there? On the way to your mom's work on your return trip back home. Stops. Um, no, I didn't go anywhere. I went straight there. I did not. No, sir. Okay. And earlier in the day when you were down at the, at the shed in the kennels with uh, Paul, did y'all discuss any injuries to any dogs? Did he and I? No, but Rogan Gibson told me about uh, the dog's tail and somebody saying his leg was broken. Which one which one's his dog? Can you try out Mr. Orange's volume? Yes. Or turn up the volume. Did he and I know, but Rogan Gibson told me about uh, the dog's tail and somebody saying his leg was broken. So, so, so right here in the interview, your question was, did Paul tell you that? So did he deny that he'd had a conversation with Paul about that? He never said he had a conversation. What did 
What, if anything, did he say about whether he'd had a conversation with Paul about that? He didn't indicate that he had a conversation with Paul. He said he had a conversation with Rogan Gibson. That he'd heard that from Rogan? Yes, sir. Which one? Which one's his dog? It's a chocolate puppy, I think. Leg, what, was the leg broken? Not that I know of. I can certainly see why something might be wrong with his tail, because when I was out there, he was chasing his tail and looking through the fence and trying to grab it. Yes, sir. That was puppy energy. <clears throat> when you got back to Moselle, which driveway did you enter? I went into I went into Brick Gates. Brick Gates. So. And Maggie and Paul weren't there. Were were there vehicles at the house? Yes, sir. How did they get down there that night? I still I was hoping you were going to be able to tell me that. The only thing that I can come up with is that black truck. Is that Buster's old black truck? Yes, sir. Does it normally stay down at the farm or does it stay at the house? Both. 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 Um, Did Maggie ever walk down there? Maggie walked down there a lot. But Paul, I mean, I just, it would, it would, it, 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 you showed me some proof that Paul walked down there that night, I would be surprised, absolutely surprised. Well, thinking about Paul's health concerns, do you think Maggie could have gotten him to walk that night? So come on, let's walk with me this one time. You know, it's possible, but again, that would be highly, highly unusual. He would have talked to her in the ride. <laughs> been highly unusual for him to walk. <clears throat> so when you were at the kennels, um, you were just down there with Paul. And you left and went back to the house for dinner. You know, I mean, Paul and I were just knocking around up at the shop, the shed, the kennels, and the, you know, just the whole property. And, and that was before dinner, yes, sir. And you didn't go back down there after dinner until you were returned trip from visiting your mother? Yes, sir. That, that's it. Keep going. I've got information that Paul was on the phone. Had you confronted him with what you're about to ask him prior to this? No, I had not. And the question you had just asked him, did that deal with whether he went down to the kennels or not after supper? Correct. And he said he had not? He had not. Gibson asked me if I was up there. He said he thought it was me. Was it you? At, at 9 o'clock? Yes, sir. No, sir. Not if my times are right. Who do you think it could have been? I have no idea. And Rogan's been around your family for pretty much all of his life. Oh, absolutely. And he recognizes your voice and you have a distinct voice. Do you think of anybody else that has a voice somewhere to yours that he may have um, misinterpreted? Mm, no. <coughs> no, sir. I mean, he...
you know, when we were talking, he had asked me that. So, you know, I mean, he had told me that he thought I was up there. Did that surprise you? Yes, sir. So when you returned back to the kennels, when you returned home from your mom's, um, were there, where were the dogs? They were like they were when, Lauren, I didn't put dogs up. Okay. So, so they, they weren't running loose? However they were. Okay. At one point in the 911 call, um, you say here, like you're talking to somebody else or something else. I say here? Here, yes sir. The dispatcher is asking you um, if they're breathing, and you said no. And she asked if you did you see anyone else in the area, and you said no. And she asked about guns near them, and you said no. And then you kind of stutter and start moving around, and you say here. saying that I guess I had to listen to it to, uh, you know but I don't recall the dog being out I'm certain that there was not a dog out um, you know I mean there's other things people have told me about that 911 call that I don't remember um, I, I don't know here. Like I was calling a dog. Calling a dog, talking to somebody else. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Yes, sir. And I mean, that obviously was nobody else out there. Okay. And I'm, I'm certain that there was not a dog loose. I don't remember saying anything about Buster would know. Um, some about threats. Um, I was asked about that later. If I had information about, or if Buster had information about threats that I had said he would know. Um, about any threats against Paul or your family? Um, nothing really new, no sir. Outside of things that Randy's told you or, um, you know, there was just so many things on the internet that, you know, just, Nothing new, no, sir. So during the 911 call, and we also talked about talked about that this night. That night, you returned back to the house to get a shotgun. Yes, sir. What door did you enter? The best that I can remember, I went in the side door um, and I went straight to the gun cabinet. Were you focused on any particular shotgun or you just grabbed one? I just grabbed one. How do you normally load your shotguns? Abbott hunters load shotguns in special ways. Um, different types of munitions, um, and I'm just seeing how asking you how you load yours. I mean, I normally put it in the chamber and uh, and push the button. What types? What what type of shot? 
do you load? All kinds. I mean, I've loaded bird shot, buck shot, slugs, skin shot. At the same time? I mean, would you would you load like a, a bird shot and a buck shot in the same load? Not, not normally. I mean, normally you put them in, you know, a load for whatever you're hunting. Mm -hmm. reason I'm asking about that, <clears throat> the shot shells that we recovered that night, one was a turkey load, one was a buckshot. I understood that. The shotgun that you had with you that night, there was a bird shot and a buckshot. Um, when Jeff went back the next day, um, I'm not sure which attorney it was, pointed out that there had been a shotgun laying on the pool table that he had put away and pointed out that ammunition that was with that and it was a buckshot and a birdshot. And then the shotgun that we took um, for potential comparison, it was also loaded with a birdshot and a buckshot. So I have all of these consistent loads along with what's that? in the feed room. I call it the feed room. And the kennels, is that what you call it? That's, that's okay. something good enough. Okay. I just want, if I say feed room, I just want you to know what I'm talking about. The night I grabbed the shells that I could get my hands on, I, 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 I don't, you know, I had no idea exactly what I had. Okay. Also, when we talked, um, I asked him if it was normal to keep guns down in the, at the kennels. And you said you had to check. Have you been able to check to see what was missing from your collection? I, I have. Yes, I, I know what's missing from what I believe is missing from, from our guns. Okay, and what are those? There's, there's three guns that I think are missing. Okay. And what kind of guns are those? It would be a Benelli shotgun, a Browning shotgun, and a pump shotgun. The Benelli and the Browning, are they pump or autos? The Benelli and the Browning are automatic. And the pump shotgun, what brand is that? I believe it's a Remington, but I'm not positive. Are they old? Are they like standard brown and black, all black or camo? Um, the uh, the <coughs> is is black. The browning is camo, and the pump is camo. Would you have those serial numbers recorded anywhere? I don't have them recorded, but I'm sure. Um, I don't know where to pump shotgun exactly came from, but I should be able to have the Benelli and the Browning. Okay. Um, because we don't know if they're stolen or where they are, um, so I, I really can't get them entered into NCIC. And, but, go ahead. But I could alert the ATF um, to where if that gun is run, that there would be an alert on it and it would get me at least back to the gun and the person that may have had it. Absolutely. So if, um, if we can work on that and get those as soon as possible. Absolutely. You said the Benelli's black, the <coughs> Browning's camo, and the pump is camo? Yes, sir. Okay. The Browning is a brown camo and the um, pump is a green camo. And you know, I understand also that a 300 was used that night, and I know there's been some. Um, I understand John Benningfield said he only had two um, of those, one of which was lost three a long time ago. But I'm telling you now, I am certain that we replaced that gun. All right. Actually, John 
news that he sold Maggie a third gun. Okay. Okay. And the story was that she was supposed to let you know that she paid for it for you to go sign the paperwork. Um, and that never occurred. Okay. So, so that's why it wasn't a number? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he has, the, he has the number. He just doesn't have a final sale on the ATF paperwork. Wow. Okay. That was replacing the one that Paul, Paul lost. Yes. That's correct. And both, both of those um, 300s, those serial numbers, are with the ATF and flagged in the system. So when they pop up, you going to get me to those. Okay. And, and that's, you know, we, we've talked about the shot shells. So the cartridge casings were 300 blackout cartridge casings that were found by Mac. There were also cartridge casings found by your house, by the side door to the gun room, and at the shoot, shooting range. Shell casings that were found by Maggie. That's Maggie's body, correct? The, shell, the, the cartridge casings found by Maggie, yes. Had he ever been confronted with this information prior to right now that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. okay I believe he was, but um, not by me, I don't think. There were also cartridge casings found by your house, by the side door to the gun room and at the shoot, shooting range. Okay. And the ones by the house and some of the ones found at the shoot range are confirmed matches to the ones found by Maggie. Okay. So, which gives another concern. I've got the same load as the shot shells and multiple guns and 300 blackout that match one's found in your property. So you now believe that those guns, that Paul's guns were used? Yes. Okay. And missing. And I understand that somebody had seen that gun recently, but, you know, and I'd ask Buster about it. Um, I, I believe that that gun has been gone since back before Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, no one, did. no one recalls Paul's first 300 going missing around Halloween at a party at Hampton. Halloween of 2020. When, when did y'all? No, that because that no, was no, no, no. It, it was years. Yeah, it, it, it was whatever Christmas he got it. So it was 17, 17. Christmas of 17. So it was the, the Halloween after in 18 is when Nolan believes it was taken out of Paul's truck. There was, um, and I don't, it would take me a while to find those notes, but uh, Mark Williams or Matt Williams is a family friend. And I'm, I may have the name wrong, but there was hundreds of people at this Halloween party. <coughs> Nolan says the adults were there, kids were there, um, and he knows no one knows that the gun was in Paul's truck when they got to the party and when they went to leave the party, it was gone. So that, that's the timeline on when that gun goes missing. Okay. I mean, I knew it had been a while. Mm -hmm. And then I think in 19, April of 19, is when? 18. April of 18. Christmas of 16, January okay. 17 okay. is when they did the gotcha. work. Gotcha. Okay. Another part in the 911 call, um, you made the comment, I should have known. And the question that surrounded, um, the dispatcher's asking, is anybody else supposed to be at the house? Um, and you said, no, ma'am, please hurry. And she says, we're getting somebody out there to you. And your next comment was, I should have known. What are you referencing in that statement? I don't remember saying that, but I guess, you know, all the threats and, you know, and I had been convinced that this was something to do with boat wreck and, you know, all of that. Or did 
get physical with you? Ever get into a heated argument and get physical? One time, I mean, a, a little bit where he wouldn't listen to me. Did you ever get physical with him? No, sir. Talking about Maggie and Paul get physical with Maggie? Yeah. Sure, she probably wanted to at times. I'm sure she wanted to at all of us. Yeah. And the one time Paul did that, he had had too much to drink. Mm -hmm. um, in a very isolated incident. Where was that? Was that at Moselle or at a store? That was at uh, Moselle. So that was pretty recent? No, sir. It had been a while. When you turned Paul over and his cell phone popped out and you picked it up and your statement was something like, um, I thought about doing something, but then I put it back down. And that was the interview, our first interview. What, what were your intentions with the phone? I don't know. I mean, it when I when I um, went up to him and the, the phone came out, I, I don't remember having intentions of doing anything with the phone. conversation at the dinner table, but Or if he put them in the house, or 
when he so the truck that he drove where was it parked on that Friday so where would he have swapped everything out I'm not sure um I'm not sure where the truck that he drove on Friday What did he, what truck did he swap out from? I think when he went to Charleston, Dale said that he helped hook up the boat to one of the white Fords. And I know one's a gas and one's a diesel. Um, it wouldn't, one, so it wouldn't have been the, it wouldn't have been the gas truck going to Charleston. Um, I'm not sure. So, this occurred the Friday before everything happened? Yes, sir. I'm not sure. On Friday, um, I had gone to stay in the hospital with my dad. I don't believe that I saw Paul. On Friday. When did y'all go up to Columbia? On Saturday. Why didn't Paul go with y'all? You know, I mean, Paul, he didn't. I mean, he liked to go to sports when there was a crowd, but that wasn't his. We go. Is that always how it's always been, or because of the buildings? No, no. I mean, he was he wasn't into ball as much. asked you when was the last time you saw Maggie or told Maggie he said an hour and a half two hours ago to me that's you know a set without thinking about it you should route it off that time um, we're sitting here trying to figure out a timeline the question was you told the dispatcher hour two hours ago hour and a half to two hours hour and a half two hours what time was the 911 call 10.06 p.m. I'll have two hours prior to that. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And you're having trouble coming up with a specific time. Oh, yeah, that's fair. I don't know. Tell me again what I said to the um, dispatcher. said an hour and a half ago probably two hours and what time was that that was when you were on the phone um, and then I will call it made at 10 6 so given two hours back that would have been eight I mean I think that's probably about I think that's probably about right. And so, you, what do you believe I'm giving you an inconsistent answer? No, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around it. When I'm asking you what time you went to the office that day, what time you got home. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yes. At this point in the investigation, did you have the video back from Paul's phone showing? The dog at the kennels. No, sir, I had not. Um, you're, you know, you're saying five or five thirty. 
I've got the card readout from the law firm, and it shows you going in at 5, 530. Going in the door? Yes, sir. And Randy says when he left about 6 o'clock, you were still there. So the times aren't matching up. I'm just trying to get I, I'm, I'm just trying to get an understanding of why I believe I left so the, the, that's not the first time I was at my office that day there were several readings but your card wouldn't work somebody had to actually had to let you in okay but, I, but I've got your card opening the door at the law firm at 5 30. And then Randy saying when he left at six, you were still there. I'm just I'm trying to understand. You know, I, I left the office earlier than I normally do. What's, you your, know? what's your normal time to leave? I mean, it's not unusual for me to be there till dark. You know, I try to get home when Maggie's home. You know, before dark. She don't like staying out there by herself at dark. That's right. So, you know, if it was 5.30 or 6, I, you know, I don't think I was still there at 6 o'clock. Okay. But, um, you know, if I was, it wasn't long after that. Okay. So, you know, I went... I believe that I went straight home. So, you know, my car, have y'all been able to get Chevrolet to download my? We're still working on that. Okay. That's a long process. Well, I mean, I got home <coughs> early enough for Paul and I to ride the property for a substantial length of time you know more than an hour i thought probably a couple of hours okay. that we were together but somewhere to go down the river we rode down um all the roads i believe i believe that we i mean we rode all over we rode all over. <coughs> have I been able to answer some of your questions? I know you probably have more. But with my questioning, it's trying to get some things cleared up. How about giving you some answers well i mean i do know more than i did for sure so yes i mean some of those questions have certainly um yes sir what are, answer. what other questions do you have that I would like to know exactly what happened. Me too. The best that I've been able to put together. Tell me, it looks like. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I believe Paul was on first. for the simple fact of where he was located. How many times was he shot? Twice. I thought he shot Maggie first because they could tell he shot her in the back of the head. What? You said he thought they shot Maggie first or Maggie was shot first? He thought, Alex said that he thought Maggie was shot first because she had been shot in the back of the head. Go ahead. We may honestly never know who was first, but I think it was Paul 
for the simple fact he wouldn't have, if, if he saw his mother getting shot, he wouldn't have run to that fever. Unless that's where one of the guns was. But, you know, we've already established family guns were used. And if they came from Paul's truck, Paul's truck was at the house. So where where were they? And how did they get down there? Yeah, how did they get down there? You just did you just ask him we've established family guns were used? Yes I did. Objection is over. Proceed. What was his response? Would nothing be the answer? Correct. Go ahead. I mean, it, it's normal for y'all to leave your keys in the cars. However, if somebody showed up and did this, you're not going to take Paul's truck back to the house and leave the key in it. Indeed. You know, we've already established family guns were used. And if they came from Paul's truck, Paul's truck was at the house. So where where were they? And how did they get down there? Yeah, how did they get down there? I mean, it, it's normal for y'all to leave your keys in the cars. However, if somebody showed up and did this, you're not going to take Paul's truck back to the house and leave the key in it. I mean, do you know that the, the guns were in the truck? I mean, could they have been somewhere else? They could have been somewhere else. I mean, he wasn't taking, he didn't have his normal truck. And I understand that Nolan Tootin believes he saw the, uh, the gun um, three weeks beforehand. Mm -hmm. And I haven't talked to him, but is, is it, is he believes it was the one that, not the one that was at the house. His shotgun that he always kept, that Paul always kept with, kept with him? Paul primarily kept, yeah, he kept a, 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 one of a couple of Benelli's. Yeah, that was a camo Benelli. Is at least the last one that Paul, that I know him saw. Okay. And the uh, HDD, some type of 7 millimeter rifle. Yes, sir. Do you have that one at home? Yes, sir. That's what he saw? That's what he saw. Because I was, I was told by somebody that Nolan saw a um, 300. He's, he told me he had not seen a 300 since March after turkey season. Those were the go-to guns, and those were the last ones that he saw. The he said he had, and the, and the network. He had not seen the 300 since March during turkey season. And he definitely saw it during turkey season? Yes. Because there was some point, you know, back when it was missing at Christmas time, The third one's missing at Christmas time? Yes, sir. So, um, anyway, if he saw it in March. Did y'all get any kind of 
forensic because of anything that you'll find? The, just the rain and the... Yeah. I mean, we, we got plenty of DNA from the scene, but... Yeah. It's Nolan's, it's Rogan's, it's Alex, it's Paul's, it's Maggie's, it's Buster's. Anybody? Yeah. David, can you tell me for sure? Um, did either one of them live after they were shot the first time? Not long. Who's that? I, the, the shooting happened very quickly. Very quick. Is this one person, two persons, three persons? Is that the first time he's ever executed? Yes, sir. Ever? Then I recall, yes. In the whole investigation at this point? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Got two guns. Got two different types of ammunition. It's hard to say. It is hard to say. Now, did neither one of them suffer very long? A matter of seconds. Did that. somebody talking about it encourage them to call or give me the name and I'll go call okay. I hear what you're saying so David we don't have any I mean not anything substantive that really makes you think hey this is a good yes, we you know like I said the only DNA we have are family and close friends we don't have any fingerprints. We don't have, um, unfortunately, we don't have any shoe wear or tire wear impressions because it rained that night. Okay. Um, the only thing, the only thing that we can go off of are the cell tower dumps. Or um, I know the FBI was out; and they were out on your property on Friday, riding around trying to get some cell phone data. Unfortunately, all of that takes time. And y'all, now y'all had to send the because his vehicles new. You had to send that off. Yes, sir. So it's not <clears> like <throat> when we hire experts to come in and just download it. It's 2021, and they don't have the systems for it yet. Gotcha. But they're working. They're creating the system. <laughs> from, what, from what I understand. Okay. Now, 
I don't know exactly how the OnStar thing works. I know how the control module works. <coughs> But we're, this is something different, right? Or is it all <coughs> contained in the same thing? There, there, there are two different systems that we took out. Yeah. Um, one is OnStar, and the other one is the telemetry system or M infotainment system. Yeah. Um, and the FBI says there is information there. Yeah. They just have to be able to extract it and put it in a report. Sure. Um, so you just wait for this. I'm waiting. Um, I'm waiting on the search warrant from um, OnStar okay. um, to see what kind of information they can give me. There's, you need a, if us signing something expedites that. Mm -hmm. I told you we'll yeah, get. I, 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 I don't own the car, but whoever yeah. we need to will sign whatever authorization you need. Okay. So you had said that, or, or maybe Jim told me something about y'all were able to get a pulse phone just with a search warrant. We have a we have a what they call a partial download. Yeah. Um, because we don't have the passcode. Sure. We can't do a full extraction. Do you think so you know, my thought was that um, I don't know who's required to authorize Apple to open it. Mm -hmm. I know that they I know there was that big thing where they weren't gonna do it yes, for whatever case. But I thought that if we, um, I think I think Maggie owned the phone. I think it was in her name. The account was in her name. Well, if you, I mean, you have to have your own separate iCloud account for each phone, um, and we've done that for Maggie's, Paul's, okay. and Alex. Okay. Um, iCloud accounts. Yeah. Um, to see if there's anything in there. Yeah. There was nothing in Paul's. Um, I'm still waiting on Maggie's. Maggie did back hers up mm -hmm. and stuff. I know that. So. Does that mean Paul didn't back his up? Probably. Um, but what I was, what my thought was, and I don't know if this is even possible, but if we get, if we get the estate, and we get the personal representative who is now the authorized person mm -hmm. to authorize it to be opened. And I, I mean surrounded by 100 lawyers we yeah. get a probate done yeah. like that and i can have the powers of appointment done yeah. in two days and we can authorize whatever it is you need to open and that and that might be beneficial so i know i think randy and i or somebody and i talked about that yeah before yeah well and i you know i said i'd do it any of us can yeah. um who would be the representative just somebody at the law firm probably one of your brothers i would think for Maggie and Paul's estate? Yeah. Uh, probably me or mm -hmm. I mean, I'm the but whoever it is, it doesn't matter. Whoever yeah. it is will do whatever y'all yeah. need to do to no it won't be anybody that'll be uncooperative. Okay. Well I mean if y'all go ahead and start working on that, All right. um, then we'll reach out to Apple and figure out how we get that accomplished. All right. Because gotta be something there. Mm -hmm. Gotta be something there. Um, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't. I mean, have y'all had to track down all the wackos on the internet, or just <laughs> only the ones that you think seem a little more not the opportunity and the yeah. inclination? You know, there, there's been a few. There's been a few that I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, but some of the information is just so far-fetched. Mm -hmm. um, I, I talked with, with one guy, um, he called in and says, well, I, I knew that Maggie's son bought a house right around the corner. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, no, they didn't. Yeah. Um, that Maggie had left her husband some time ago and was going to move to Florida to be closer to her father because mother was dead mm -hmm. and i'm like okay thank you god mm -hmm. so it's a lot yeah. of a lot of that stuff yeah people that people that want to get involved yeah um people that think they have some information mm -hmm. um you know and you know especially the the matter of death mm -hmm. they're all over the place well 
I mean, you know, y'all been taking a licking in the press about not disclosing stuff, but Jesus Christ, man. I don't you, have anything to disclose. Well, and, and you know, why are you going to tell the bad guy what you got? Thank you. You know? I mean, I just don't understand it. I mean, look. Nobody nobody wants to know more than this man right here mm -hmm. and this man right here. I know. Everybody else. I believe that. Yeah. Everybody else. David, how far apart, I mean, how far apart in time would, would the, um, you know, the shot? Did one of them know the other one was dead or had been shot? I think it's impossible to answer that question. I think it is impossible. But you certainly called the shot first. I believe he was. I'm not certain. I believe he was. Maggie would have known that then, wouldn't she? You well, don't know how soon after when she was shot? And, 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 it, and it all depends on how many shooters were there. I mean, if, 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 if we're looking at two shooters, it could have happened at the same time. If we're looking at one shooter, it would happen. And don't, I know, I know you can't help but think about it, but don't beat yourself up over getting the answer. It's not going to do anything to you. Um, when I ask you, uh, um, now that you talk to me, are you willing to, um, if some of my family, Maggie's mom and dad or sister, are you willing to talk to them? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'll, I mean, I'll meet them where, where they want to. It would I mean, be easy to meet them. And I, just, them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I live in Charleston, so it's yeah. nothing for me to shoot up to Somerville and meet with the Grand Setters. Thank you. I know y'all are doing everything you can. And I don't take any personal offense at asking me these questions. I know you got to do what you got to do. Well, I mean, and, and I hate to give any credence to the media, but with the media keep throwing you in there, then you got you to gotta ask the questions. If I can get every bit of evidence possible mm -hmm. that's going to exonerate When you get my car stuff, that'll help. <clears throat> Alan, you said earlier Maggie didn't like staying out there by herself. Yes, sir. Uh, was there any kind of, I know we asked you once before in one of the earlier interviews about cameras and have y'all talked about doing any kind of camera system out there, or, you know, stuff getting missing. You know, Maggie talked about stuff getting missing. We never, we're hearing that type of stuff so we never really had problems with stuff missing um but we still talked about getting you know cameras and you know doing all of that but we just hadn't done it we talked about it for a, a while but the, no, no not really any conversation about stuff up and walking away or getting missing between between you and me any conversations between me and Maggie about stuff? You and Maggie or you and Paul, either one about stuff that had been missing or had somebody came up and taken from the bar or from the house or anything well, like that? Only thing that I can remember being discussed missing was some drills and um, some uh, Milwaukee tools. How long ago was that? couple of it was since CB got <clears throat> hired I'm pretty sure okay. because that was one of the things Paul 
when he's looking for him, is going to ask CB. And I had a boy um, working out there for just a, just a short period named Matt Luce. Um, that, um, is that the first time you've heard his name? The last name, yeah. I've heard the name Matt, Matt. Matt Luce. I think it's spelled L U C E. And he basically did what CB does now? No. Or something? He came in and was, you know, just trying to, because I didn't have anybody um, working out there and just to kind of keep things from getting totally out of control. Mm -hmm. He came in and, you know, he, he does that for another friend, works with another friend, and he's just kind of coming in to help me, you know, probably um, I believe he probably would have been there in the late late fall probably, I'm guessing. Is he from Hampton or Montebro? He's from Buford, I believe, originally, but he lives up in um, he lives between Buford and um, trying to think of the name of the plantation that my friend Barrett uh, Bowler has. That's who he works for. Barrett Bowler. Yeah, Junior. Yes, but it's, it's Bowler. Where is how he looks? Oh, yeah. you know, you <laughs> He was like one of my granddaddy's contemporaries. Um, and now there's a Tom Bowler that's kind of just retired. Um, and they are, I think that's, um, they're kin, but not super close. How old is Matt? Ish. I'd say he's 30. you go? I had to step out of Houston restroom. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs>
I see the two people who have it. that you bought for the Christmas presents. They were matching set, right? Other than color. Am I right about that? Yes, sir. They, I mean, they were exactly the same. With thermal night vision and stuff like that. Or the one that you purchased to replace the lost one. Did it have any kind of, of uh, optics on it? Night vision scope, anything like that? It didn't or have a nice vision scope. Um, you know, and I don't know if Paul had put something on it. He, he would move scopes around from gun to gun to gun. But um, I'm not. Oh. Twenty. 